Welcome to Paradiso. Jiro Sugiyama at your service. Do you have a security concern, or is there something else I can help you with? Ah, yes, of course. I'm glad you came. As you can imagine, we're in a bit of a predicament. Under normal circumstances, we would not enlist outside help in this manner. But this is a matter we can't afford to worry our guests about. As such, we need to handle this discreetly. Failure on your part to do so could have severe consequences. So, before we proceed, can you swear not to discuss this with anyone else unless explicitly directed to do so? Great. I appreciate it. Not too long ago, a strange and enormous ship appeared in Parima space. It is now locked in orbit around our planet. So far, it doesn't seem to be hostile, but any attempts to communicate with it have been in vain, so we're unsure of the ship's intentions. Can't say for sure. Looks worn, but not cobbled together like a Crimson Fleet Junker. Others have been saying it's some new Varun design, a gigantic battleship with hidden armaments preparing for assault, but that doesn't check out either. There's also been talk about non-human sentient life. The comms data we received might support that, but humanity spread far and wide and no one's ever encountered anything like that. Still, first contact. Could you imagine? It is. Whatever's going on, we need to approach this with care. First, see if you have more luck communicating with them. If not, you may have to try boarding. Whatever you do, it's important to remember to seek diplomacy with who or whatever's on board. As soon as you have any more information, report to Oliver Campbell. He's the CEO of Paradiso. All formal decisions will need to go through him and he'll have your pay. Good luck. Escape trajectory. Human. From the planet Earth in the Sol system. It's just that we weren't expecting to find life, let alone human life out here. We thought we were the only ones to leave Earth. Imagine being cut off from humankind for that long. How terribly frightening that would be. Perhaps we should greet our guests. Of course. Manners. I'm Captain Diana Brackenridge. This is Security Officer Bomani Reader. Hmm. And this is Dr. Mabuti da Costa, one of our elders. A pleasure to meet you. You've come aboard the Earth colony ship, Constant. Generations ago, we set forth from the planet Earth with the mission of colonizing a new habitable world in the spirit of our ancestors nearly a millennium ago. I see. As you may have presumed, we're in a bit of a bind. 
Our ship has finally completed its near 200 year journey from Earth, only to find our new home seemingly colonized by, well, we don't know. Communications haven't been successful, so your arrival is fortuitous. Perhaps you'd be willing to act as a middle person between ourselves and the others. We're not entirely sure. Our engineers believe it's possible to our technology just isn't compatible with theirs. All we hear when using them to communicate with anyone is a bunch of disturbing noise. It gave me the heebie-jeebies at first. Well, the short answer is, we didn't. It's a generation ship, which is to say that most of us live long, happy lives on board and passed our mission down to our children. It was never intended that the original crew would make it to our destination. The goal was always the preservation of the human race, above all else. Though, it would seem that was perhaps a bit <laughs> presumptuous. We do. Well, sort of. We saw structures using our surveying equipment. We've also seen the various ships pass us by. Some even seemed to want to communicate, but couldn't. Of course, we had no idea that they were being piloted by other humans. Of course, we know that now. Human or not, we were still unable to communicate our intentions. As soon as we discovered them, we fully expected negotiations would be necessary. Now then, please follow me. There's much to discuss first. We'll speak more on the matter once we reach the bridge. Dr. DeCosta, you may return to your quarters if you wish. Thank you, Captain. I will follow you to the bridge, ma'am, for security purposes. I do not believe we have need to fear our guest, but I'll allow it if you insist. Welcome to the Earth colony ship Constant. In the early 2100s, my ancestor, Rupert Brackenridge, researched a number of scientific scenarios, climate change, asteroid impact, nuclear war, global pandemic, and more. Each scenario showed the likelihood of an extinction event to be within 50 years. He fully believed Earth was destined to be rendered uninhabitable. We've always assumed that was So, he gathered the best and brightest he could find, built the constant, and set a course for this planet here. We were told that it was the largest, most advanced ship ever constructed on Earth at the time. If you can believe, entire generations have been born, lived and died on this ship. It really goes to show that there are no limits to human ingenuity and perseverance. Careful waving that fancy gun around. We don't need to see what it can do. I've never seen a ship like yours before. Then again, I haven't seen any ships before. So, here we have to say, with technology this outdated, I'm amazed this vessel is able to navigate at all. It's almost like walking through a museum. We didn't believe anyone would be out here, but I'm glad for it. A bit frazzled, as you can imagine. People are anxious about discovering that we're not alone, and also worried about what will come to pass. While we hope we can work out a deal with the people on the surface, they seem reluctant to reach out, so there's no telling what will come of that. I do know that we can't afford to stay here in orbit forever. The ship was built to sustain us for many years with backup provisions just in case, but even that will come to an end eventually. Well, as I mentioned, we've been unsuccessful in communications with anyone up until you arrived, though not for lack of trying. But since you're asking, maybe you'd be willing to be a sort of diplomat between us and them as we attempt to resolve our situation. Does that sound agreeable to you? We suspect that our equipment is woefully obsolete compared to whatever you all have now. In all honesty, we never expected to need to communicate with anyone, so our comms aren't particularly robust. That limits our options. 
We even attempted communicating with lights and sounds, something we saw in an old movie, but I don't believe they picked up on it. If anything, it may have inadvertently alarmed them. Ah, so they have a name, Paradiso. And it sounds promising that they sent you here to speak with us. You see, we intended to settle here, but we assumed that they intend to defend their claim given their presence here. We'd like you to go speak to them on our behalf and help us negotiate a solution, preferably one that favors us. When we left Earth, there were no claims to planets this far out into space. We had assumed that we were the only ones attempting a generational journey such as this, meaning that there would be no need for a formal claims process. Regardless, my ancestor, Rupert Brackenridge, did manage to file a charter for this planet's first colony to be named New Jamestown. According to his records, no one took it seriously when he filed it, so likely it was either ignored or the records were lost to the ages. Given humanity's lack of interest in colonizing the far reaches of space at the time, it shouldn't have been a problem, but again, here we are now. Yes, yes, of course. But we need to start from a firm position and state our goal. If need be, we can... compromise, work out a mutually beneficial deal or some such. But initially, I'd like you to be firm with them and convince them to leave the planet to us. Let me know how they respond, and we'll go from there. We thought about it, but it simply won't do. I need to think about the distant future of our people. Sure, our first settlement may be small, but our predecessors dreamt of our new civilization spreading across the globe. That will be difficult if someone else plans to do the same. While we're not completely close to the idea of sharing, it's much easier if we have complete domain over this world. Now, now, it makes little sense to give up before you try. Thank you, and good luck. Have a great day. Hello there. Excuse me, you can't just waltz in there. Do you have an appointment? Oh, you're the one they're waiting for, then. Do you need anything else from me before you meet with the board? Sure. Have fun in the shark tank. And don't worry, even they call it that. No major incidents in a while. Let's hope it stays that way. I just feel that we should be Hello? focusing on the I natural didn't realize beauty TV was letting people in here. Not our amenities. I am. And you must be the diplomat Jiro told me about. Welcome, welcome. Normally I'd offer you an all-inclusive stay at our resort before we spoke. But given these circumstances, I'm gonna cut to the chase. We've got our friends, the aliens, up there causing all sorts of problems for our resort. You like that? The marketing team came up with it. The thought is, if we can't get rid of them, it might actually attract more tourism. Come see the aliens! <laughs> we run a premier resort getaway here. <laughs> we can't have our guests concocting stories about some bodgy old ship hanging around up there. As it is, we've had to reroute our luxury liners around the other side of the planet on entry so no one sees it. <laughs> it's bad for business. We need to nip this in the bud and take care of it before the tourists catch on and cause a scene. Despicable? Hardly. Just a backup plan in case we can't get them to leave. But you're right, no one's gonna buy aliens. Remind me to fire the marketing team. So tell me, what's the actual deal with this massive eyesore of a ship? Besides scaring people away. Well, that's something. Shame we can't just tell them kindly to bugger off. Something tells me that's not gonna work. 
Now, tell me, what are we going to do about it? Give me some proposals, people. I need something to work with here. Hmm. We could offer to resettle them here. There's more than enough space. They could stay here. Temporarily. But it'll cost them. Quite a bit, too. They'd need to work off all their debts before being allowed to leave. Ah, uh, maybe not. What if we help them get out of here? Outfit their ship with a grab drive so they can find a new home. We could even lend our engineers to help and give their captain an updated star map. What do you think? Sounds costly. We can't absorb that cost, and it's unlikely they even have compatible currency, let alone enough for the transaction. Someone else would have to foot the bill. Oh, I swear this would be a lot easier if they ceased to exist entirely. Anyway, Seema's got the right idea. Either works for me. Just tell me what you want to do. And which proposal will you be taking to the good captain? I assume there's a captain. They'd be hard pressed to defend their claim in any courts. Our charter goes back years. It was registered with both the UC and Free Star Collective, per the Centaurus Proclamation. We may be outside the settled systems, but that charter is official as can be. I'm sorry, but you're going to need to be the one to break the news to them that they need to make a compromise or leave. Ah, good on you. You want to see a man named Benny St. James over at Hope Tech. He's the best in the business. If anyone can retrofit a 200-year-old ship with a modern grab drive, it'd be him. We'll coordinate our engineering team with his when you return. Though you may have to help the Constance engineers prepare for it on their end. Good luck. I know this was a difficult decision. But if it's any consolation, I think you've made the right choice. Compared to the destruction of their vessel and relegating them to a life of servitude, I'd say this is the best chance they've got. Right. On behalf of the Paradiso Group, we appreciate your help. There are millions of planets out there. People can go to any one of them. Set them down. Everything in the green. things for you. Oh, hello. Someone worth paying attention to. Oh, hello. I'm not used to people wanting to talk to me. Sure, that sounds like me. What can I do for you? I'm a little busy, but uh, I think I could spare some time. just said that. Of course I can help you. Oliver sent a courier ahead of you. I did some research on ships from that era, and I have a decent idea what we're dealing with. So grab drives didn't really take off until after the ship was built. But I've got access to an ancient grab drive that looks like it could be compatible. It's some minor adjustments. It's in good shape, too. Parts not cheap, though. Neither is the labor. Just pay the combined cost of parts and labor, and it's yours? It's a pretty big ask, given how rare these old grab drives are. As much as I'd love to, I just don't... I don't know if I can afford to take a loss on this. Again, I'm sorry. Oh, I had no idea. That's very generous. I mean it to rethink this.
true. I keep telling myself I'm holding on to it for the right time. Perhaps this is that right time. Tell you what. Sounds like this is for a good cause. While I can't give you the part for free, I won't charge you for the work. You're done right it is. I'll get to work on it right away. I recommend you go back to the ship and ask the captain to prepare for its retrofit. Standard stuff. I'm sure they have an engineer on board to help. We'll send the part along when it's ready and install it with the help of Oliver's people. Pleasure working with you. Inelegant solutions to complex technical problems. <laughs> I was hoping to talk to our visitor from outer space, and here you are! Welcome, welcome! I have a million burning questions, but I won't overwhelm you. There will be plenty of time for that later. Please, indulge me just a couple. How did you do it? Did humanity finally discover faster than light travel and eclipse our poor old ship? I read about this technology in our archives from Earth, but it was only theoretical back then. <laughs> Amazing! I'll have to learn more. Oh, I've got so many questions, but I'm being rude. I haven't even given you my name. Chief Engineer Kazemi, but you can call me Amin. And, I might add, I'm one of the reasons we're still floating out here today. Yes, of course. Anything for my new friend. What crab drive? <laughs> Just joking with you. The Paradiso engineers filled me in. Okay, let's see what we need to do. Hmm. All right. This will be fun. And hopefully there will be no explosions in the process. I have just received word that the drive is here. Ready to get to work? Great, great, great! There are three preparations I need you to help me make while I set things up on my end. First thing I need you to do is reroute the power from the port turbo pump to the auxiliary cryogenic radiator. Then, turn the plasma runoff inhibitor function to 5%. Last, you'll need to decouple the magnetic flange pipe enclosures from the auxiliary module assembly. Got it? Let's hop to it! These are exciting times, aren't they? What? finally give my crew a chance at a new life. Well, well. It would appear we have the means to go nearly anywhere now, thanks to you. The engineers even upgraded our communications equipment so we can speak with passing ships. Turns out it was a pretty easy fix. Thank you again for all you've done. Without you, we'd most likely be stuck. 
But you went above and beyond. I'll make sure people tell tales of your generosity for as long as our society lives. I don't know if we can ever fully repay you. Thank you again. We were never trained to address threats coming from outside.